I haven't found a young adult yet that's come to our church that hasn't first looked at our website. Do you see it? Pastor Nate's devotional. Now, they can find it on, on any of the sidebar. Those are pop-outs that they can look at. The church isn't about me. It's about people getting together. No, we, just some promotional materials. Whenever we do a promotion and build a video, we do not film our sermons. Okay. They're all just audio. But I can tell you my audio is now being played in three different, on three different continents on secular radio stations that have contacted us to use it. Two in Africa, one in uh, India. The best part is the one in India, some bar is actually the one paying for our <laughs> slot. So, yes? Can you imagine having to set up and take down cameras every Sabbath? We would love. Another reason that that we didn't do videos is because we found most people were listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Most people listen to podcasts, but they do it while they're in the car or they're out, and they're not just, you have to actually sit down and watch the video instead of just listening. And so it's a lot of extra expense, um, and you actually get more, usually more hits with just audio. Yeah. Um, mic. Sure, why not? You got Since one. I have it. Um, I will say that we have a two-year-old but, you know, at home, and we do have a camera set up, a camera system that records, or it doesn't record, but it broadcasts the sermon and whatever's going on into what we call the mother's room, which is really just the kindergarten room with a bunch of toys in it, which is great when you have a two-year-old at church. <laughs> but um, that, that's just another way we, we're able to uh, accommodate uh, families with, with younger kids because, it, I mean, most of the adults know if you have a two-year-old, there's no way you're going to sit through an entire church service quietly. And so that way, you know, if Brian is busy doing something um, with uh, audiovisual and I'm stuck with a two-year-old by myself, I can just, you know, take her to the mother's room, but I'm not missing out on the service. And um, usually there's one of the deacons is strolling around the church and they'll always pop their head in, say hi, ask how I'm doing. Um, usually there's other mothers in there we're able to connect um, so that's just another way that even though we don't record the, the sermons and put them online, it's just we do have a video system hooked up for, you know, the, the younger families within the church that they can also um, have access to the sermon without having to feel like they're disrupting the service or, or anything like that. This is not, no, our advertising that we do through Google doesn't cost us anything. It's called AdWords. Um, if you notice, I want you to look at this calendar. What do you notice on it? There's nothing going on during the week, is there? You have any idea why? Lazy. Yeah, we're lazy, yeah. <laughs> have any idea why? We, we, our church is located about 35 minutes from the airport, an hour roughly from downtown Atlanta. Nothing happens during the week at church because we couldn't get anybody there. Neither would we get the community there on any consistent basis to plan something during the week. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have small groups. They are happening, but they're happening set up by people who live in certain areas and they invite their friends to it and it happens at their house, it's not happening at church. And that's why. Because I've had people go, wow, you guys do a lot. Well, how do you do it when there's nothing happening other than Sabbath? Well, there's a reason because we couldn't get people to show up if we ran it. We, we try. We're going to do 10 days with this. And if we didn't, you know, um, some of you have seen it, the Revelation thing that was on the front page there. Um, if it wasn't that we are offering a free dinner to everybody who comes, we wouldn't have anybody for that either because they would never get there. Because by the time they would have gotten home, gotten a meal, and got there, it would have been after 8 o'clock at night. 
So if we don't offer the food, they don't come, including our young adults, because they're working the jobs in Atlanta. That's why they've moved there. You know, Brian gets home at what time most nights? Seven? Six, six, yeah, after six. So if we don't offer dinner, he ain't getting to the meeting. <laughs> so, he, so I offered him dinner. <laughs> so the idea is, look at what your church setting is located by. What, what are the things that work best for you and find your own rhythm? But um, it, it is on my heart, and, and for the month of February, I'd like to at least host and plan with some other, other leaders um, a dinner for the young adults of our church. And maybe the, the week of what would be, I guess, typically where um, Valentine's Day would fall. Um, what day have you found um, works well uh, for your young adults, if you, if you, had, a, if you had a meeting or, or had a dinner plan for them, does the, a weekday or the weekend work? Better? Weekend. Pick a weekend um, and, and also do it at your house. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, every year I host at least once. I try twice a year, but this last year we only ended up with once. Um, have all the young adults, and I invite them over to the house. I don't make all the food, though. I turn around and t give them the menu and go, you pick what you're going to bring. <laughs> you know, and, but we create a menu. Young adults will love menus. Hey, let's do a theme this. Let's do a theme that. Don't tell them it's a potluck. You know how much you're going to get with a potluck? Zero. You turn around and say, hey, we're going to have a, an Italian theme. And all of a sudden, you're like, wow, I, you guys can cook? <laughs> yes, they can. And if you can't think of anything else, there's always haystacks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. What I found with a lot of the different young adult groups that are they're actually thriving is there's a Friday night thing that goes on, which they like Friday night, many of them do, although there's some that Sabbath afternoon is better for them. Um, and then there's some that are very service-oriented that want Sunday mornings. Uh, very few parents of young children want Sunday mornings. Uh, but, but if you kind of query your young adults to find out what works best for them, it's usually around the weekend. There's one other thing as you're building this list. Kind of identify, is this a college student? Is this person a young professional but single? Or is this a young couple? Very different interests, very different focuses. I said we have 11 at Southern right now. We have zero college students that are local. <laughs> zero. They all left for college. So we don't focus on our college age group. They come home on the, uh, on the holidays, and they all are friends from Southern. So they come home and they hang out again at, when they get back. So we really don't plan for them. So we basically look at two groups, young couples and prof young professional singles. But if you're in a college area, you're going to have a bunch of college students. You may not have as many young professionals unless you have a graduate program that they've, they're going through and they're now be, they're staying put. Um, so you, gotta, you want to look at that because it's a very different audience that you're trying to reach. You know, young professionals, Friday night, Saturday afternoon. The college student, whenever class isn't happening. Late. Yeah, late. You know, they suddenly plan a 10 p.m. thing and I cringe. I'm not coming to it. Sorry. The young professionals, you know, they turn around and go, can it be 7 in the morning before I go to work? And I go, oh. But, yeah, make sure you identify what your group, what it really looks like. Because it won't be the same for a college campus group versus a bunch of young professional couples, which is largely what we have at our church. young adults and couples. There were no young profession, the professionals, uh, no couples with kids. But when we moved up here, that changed because the dynamic is so much different. It's a little bit harder because yeah. you have families with families and trying to plan is really difficult. But I think we can, we're trying. So. 
Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Does the school website look similar to this? Theirs is much nicer than ours. Nicer. Okay. We put our money into our school. So our school website is like state-of-the-art, fancy. It's got all the nice graphics and everything. The church is for information. We don't have to sell the church on the website. For a school, you have to kind of sell the school on the website when you're competing against about eight other Christian schools within five miles of you, you have to compete. <laughs> so. Okay, what if we take about a 10-minute break, because we didn't have this one scheduled in, but we're, uh, we're running ahead of schedule. So 10-minute break, and go to the bathroom, walk around a little bit, wake up. I know Vanessa's been driving all night to get here, and now he's getting tired, so... <laughs> Walk around a little bit. In 10 minutes, we'll, uh, we'll pick it back up and, and roll on. All right? So here's my goal, is that we will uh, fast forward things, and we'll probably have you out of here by 3.30 or 3.20, maybe even a little sooner. Uh, that way, you can leave earlier, we can clean up earlier, and everybody gets to go home earlier. Uh, that works better. So we're going to move into kind of a, some closing comments. I want to... Um, First of all, thank Nate and uh, Brian and Allie for, for their parts here, and appreciate you sharing. That's some pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and what I liked about it was his transparency, saying, hey, you know what, we're not, we're not succeeding in all fronts. Um, here's what we found. I just want to throw a few extra things in. This is all for free here. Oh, wait, the whole day was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. This is extra free. Um, just some comments and thoughts as people have been asking questions, and then we'll do a short Q&A, and then I want to give you some opportunities to share with you some things that we're doing that you can actually plug people into that will help as well, and then we'll, uh, we'll let you go. Um, one of the main things that this takes to actually have uh, a young adult liaison really effectively working, obviously, is to have your church leadership on board. Your pastor, your top three influencers. That's why I started there. But what happens if they're not? Thank you for asking that question. Um, it's free, right here. Here's what I've discovered. Nobody can stop an unofficial greeter. They'll try, but you know, you can stand in the background, and after the official greeters have already greeted them, there's nothing saying as a church member, you can't step forward and say, hey, how are you? I'm so-and-so, and then you can do your thing right there. Uh, this is the way to start it. If you're, if you're polite and you, they begin to see you're effective and people are starting to come because of what you're doing, oftentimes they go, Hey, have you ever thought about being a greeter? No, never crossed my mind. Wow, maybe I will. Um, but oftentimes, if you talk about this to your leadership in terms of going next level, and terminology is important, and what I found out about pastors, since I've been one for about 30-something years, is that we like to, to, to be the answer people. And um, that if it's not our idea, we have to at least uh, think that we came up with most of it. Um, and there's really a, a real good reason behind that, and that is because there are so many different offshoots and weird people out there. And when you're a shepherd trying to protect a church, it's often very difficult to know who has real true motives and who's just trying to get in to wreck your church. And so, by nature, where we are in the pastorate at, these, at this point in time is it's a pretty scary thing. When somebody comes into your church and they're real smooth and they're, oh, pastor, I just love your sermons. You're, most of you, you, know, you think, wow, thank you very much. Most pastors are going, oh, what's going on there? 
Why are you doing that? Uh, and, and this is just a subconscious thing we do because we've had people come in, move their way into leadership, and all of a sudden, they're trying to take the church a whole different direction. And so as the shepherd, you have to be very wary of that because there are wolves out there that, that come and try to steal your flock. Uh, and so it's understandable uh, for your pastor and your leadership to be a little wary and going, well, yeah, that sounds nice, but... And so one way around that, one thing that will be helping you is in the next few weeks, uh, you'll see in the communique or something like that, uh, an article from Ed Wright talking about this particular training event and a, a, basically a conference-wide system of culture change utilizing young alt liaisons. So that's going to help you as far as your pastor. But in talking to your pastor and talking to your top three influencers, the terminology you want to use is, um, I'd like to help us take retaining our young adults to the next level or attracting young adults to the next level. It's not criticizing what's been done because sometimes in our human nature, if we get criticized too much, we start putting the brakes on. But when you want to go to the next level, who doesn't want to go to the next level? You know, oh, well, next level. Yeah, well, what's next level? Well, I went to this training seminar and... Uh, Pastor Don, he's just so next level, it's unbelievable. No, you don't have to say that, but uh, <laughs> this guy is so next level. Um, but when you par- start putting it in that terminology, it begins to say, look, let's notch it up, not criticizing what isn't being done or has been done. We're just saying, let's move the next level. Let's go to the next step. And so it becomes a progression to what you're already doing. So that's just a suggestion. Does that help? Um, in the way you talk about it, Rather than criticizing what has or hasn't been doing, just say, hey, um, we went to this seminar, we're talking about work in this direction, next level would be, and kind of paint a picture for them. And that makes it easier for them to accept. Um, So how do you create a vision and timeline for this stuff to happen? Well, the first step is simply start. Start talking. Start talking to those People, those influencers, start talking to people around you, start talking to your friends. If you're a young adult, start talking especially to your friends to say, how can we, how can we take this? And even if it's not an official capacity, how can we begin somewhere? And I'll say, anything is better than nothing. So you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to go out and just really go after it, and somebody shuts you down to really going after it. That's okay. What you do is step back, say, okay, that level is not going to work yet. Let's back down until we finally find something that will work. If it's only being friendly in the foyer after the greeters have gotten hold of them, start there. And then gradually widen and and keep working it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I want to challenge you. Now, in, in the first break this morning, we had you have an assignment. Anybody remember what the assignment was? Meet three people and what? Contact information. You should have that. If you haven't met three people and got contact information, you have to do that before we'll let you go today. You're like locked in until you... No. Um, here's what that's about. I would like for you to contact those three people at least once per month between now and August. Just to say, how are you doing? How's it going for you? What have you tried? We've tried this. How did it go? It bombed. (laughs) Okay, good. I feel better because ours bombed too. But we're going to keep going. And by the way, if you're going to try something and let it bomb, just go ahead and bomb good, okay? Uh, Just blow it out of the water uh, because it's a lot more fun that way. Everybody likes to see explosions. Just watch Mythbusters, you know? They're always blowing something up. Anyway, but you utilize those three contacts during the next six months or so. And before you leave today, I would like for you to set your first either date by which you will email each other or you'll call each other or you'll text each other, however you want to contact each other. You'll set that before you leave today and say, by this date, we'll be in contact. And then put it on your calendar. Because if you don't do it before you leave, guess what? 
It won't happen. Um, with me, I have my little electronic brain right on my hip. If I lose that, I'm in deep trouble. Um, and fortunately, I've got it backed up about four places. And so I can go to that and kind of figure out where I'm at. But it's a, it's a lonely world for me if I leave my phone at home. Uh, here's what's going to happen. We're going to do a video conference follow-up. You'll receive an email uh, just prior on March 25, and you can write that down, from 6 to 7 p.m. and June 24 from 6 to 7 p.m. I'm going to be leading a video conference. Now, I'll be sending out this ahead of that. I'll be sending out a, a link and the time, and all you have to do is click on the link and make sure you've got a camera on your on your phone or your device, whatever it is, that works. So you can check in. It's kind of like maybe a Google Hangouts, or we might use Zoom, or we might use something else. Yeah? You said that real quick, and I don't write as fast as you talk. March 25th and June what? 24. June 24, yeah. <laughs> Both times from 6 to 7. We'll do one hour. And what I want to do there is I want to... I want to just check in with you guys because you're part of this with us. You're helping us build this thing, and I want to see what's working, what's not working. And, and you know what? If the whole thing really is blown apart, we'll have to put something totally different together for our August weekend. But what I'm hoping is between now and August, we can get some wins on the, on the board, so to speak, at different churches so that when we come together in August, uh, I'm hoping you will, we're going to do a weekend at Cahutta, that we will actually be able to compare notes, and some of you guys will be up here saying, this is what we did. This is what happened. And you might be able to say, we did this, and just about blew us all the way out of the water, so don't do that. And, and that's the stuff we need to know too. Again, this is not uh, something that we have. It's an experiment. And uh, you would not have wanted to be with me in chemistry labs <laughs> because I was not good at chemistry, but I like the experiments. And I always kind of went off on my own just to see if I get something to blow up. But um, anyway, it was an interesting time. So this is an experiment, and we're not trying to make it blow up. What we're trying to do is get it to move forward. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, There uh, there have been people that have asked me, so what else is happening in the conference? How can I plug kids into that? Uh, you know, you don't have to do all the ministry there is to youth and young adults because on the conference level, we provide a lot. Let me tell you what's happening. Next weekend at Kahuta, Rob Lang uh, and myself will be leading out in the Oasis Public High School retreat. We have public high school students or, or students that are homeschooled who... Um, who don't go to Adventist schools, last year we had about 250 that came uh, from all across the conference. And so we've done this now for the last 12 or 13 years, uh, but it's our annual Oasis High School Retreat. Now, here's the deal. Uh, the deadline was yesterday, but because you came today, <laughs> I'll tell Elise, uh, if you call in Monday with names, we'll, we'll let it slide we can get it under the wire because she has to process what came in yesterday on Monday anyway. That's the, the little tip. But if she doesn't have it by five Monday, it's not getting in. I can just tell you that. So if you've got public high school students that you think would benefit from this, uh, call in first thing and ask for Elise, A-L-Y-S-E, Elise. Tell her you were at the Young Adult Liaison Training and Pastor Don said so, and then she'll yell at me, not you. A-L-Y-S-E, Elise. Um, March 17, I'm saying that right now, is that right? Yes. yes. Is our Regenerate uh, Youth and Young Adult Festival in Cartersville. Happens at the Church at Liberty Square. It's an all-day event. It's our big event where we bring youth and young adults in from all over the conference. We'll have about 1,500 to 2,000 people there every year. Um, this year we'll have a young adult track in the afternoon. One of the, one of the things we have is uh, a let's talk session with the president. So Ed Wright will be answering questions, Q&A with all young adults. And um, 
So that's going to be part of the afternoon session. After our expression session, we'll have a, a breakout there. And the only breakout for young adults is going to be Let's Talk with Ed Wright. And I just nailed that down yesterday with him, or Thursday, for sure. And he's, he's planning on, on being there, and he's excited about it. That's because he doesn't know what he's getting into. But <clears throat> anyway... If you are a public university campus person or you have people in your church that go to, to public universities, our ACF retreat, Adventist Christian Fellowship retreat, is at Cahutta. And um, February 23 to 25. And we're heavily subsidizing that because we know university students don't have a lot of money, so it's $10 for the whole weekend. That includes everything. Uh, we're heavily subsidizing that. Because <laughs> that won't even buy one meal, just about. And so it's going to be a great weekend. Uh, we're calling it Next Level Discipleship. And um, we're going to have a lot of stuff going on that weekend. And including, we're even going to have the zip line open at night, Saturday night, as well as the flying chair Saturday night. So... The flying chair, I've ridden it twice, my first and last time. <laughs> Scared me to death. Three teenage girls taught me into getting on there. Pastor Don, you got to ride this with a touch run. And Pastor Rob had to videotape that thing for me. I, and he did it not for me, he did it for him. <laughs> so he could laugh at me. And he and Pastor Ken Rogers were out there watching. This, this chair takes you up about 60 feet off the ground. And then somebody pulls the rope... And it just swings. So you're free falling for a little while. All of a sudden it comes underneath you. And on the video, all you can hear is when I come to the bottom, all the air is compressed out of my lungs. And so you get this, <laughs> come back through. <laughs> now the girls are screaming the entire time. How they do that, I do not know. They're screaming the entire time. And I just, <laughs> on the video. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so for those, you know, of the, of the uh, ACF group that want to try that, awesome. I'll stand there and cheer you on, but I am not doing that again. I'm too old for that. Um, so those are three of the major events coming up uh, this, this spring. Uh, this summer, uh, July 9 to 25, there is a Share Him trip to South Africa designed for young adults who want to go present their own evangelistic series. It was, uh, they came to us with a cost of $4,300. We said, that's not going to cut it. They found donors. We found some donors. We've got it down to 2000 per person for 10 days in South Africa, and that includes a safari. So uh, you, you, preach, um, you preach a series, you go on a safari, you come home, and you just sleep for a while. But uh, so the share him trip. That's uh, that's going to be available. Short, just after that one gets back, and I can't remember the dates right now. It's on that little calendar that we. It's in your packet. What is it? Exactly. So you can actually do both of these. Get back, rest five days, and go again. Um, there is a trip to Papua, Indonesia. We have gone the last two. Young adults have gone the last two years and built jungle chapels. Um, this year they're going to be building a jungle school. And it's, uh, it's quite, the, quite the adventure. Uh, I've seen the videos. I've not been. Rob went, uh, and I was glad it was him when it showed me what he had to do. But um, it's amazing. These people live way up in the mountains, and they fly the airplane onto a runway, a dirt strip that goes uphill. So they have to fly it down to the ground to have it roll up the hill. And the villagers from that point carry all the metal, all the aluminum stuff, and they use um, solar generators to charge cordless batteries for the drills and stuff, and that's how, actually how they put the stuff together. But they go on a hike from there. It's another like three or four hour, five hour hike on up the mountain, and there they will construct the schools. Um, and uh, there's, there's a video, and we're going to be in the link on our young adult Facebook page this week, uh, they told me they'd be getting that to me, um, that actually shows where this is going to be. 
pretty pretty cool. The price on that, they haven't totally set, but it's going to be right around that $2,000 mark as well. So that's for young adults if you know of some that might want to do that. Um, what's that? Oh. Is that the cruise of the mission thing? The mission, yeah. 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 Yeah, cruise of the mission is from the North American Division, and that's through them, but we, they wanted us to put it on our calendar, so we did. And I asked them if I put it on their calendar. If I, we put it on our calendar, do I get to go free? And they said no. So, so I quickly forgot about that one. Anyway, <laughs> yes? Uh, you will need to contact by the end of February. Okay, so February yeah. 28th? There's actually, on the, on, the, um, on the website, there's all the information on both of those trips. Okay. So if you go to the gccsda.com website and then go to departments, go down to young adults, click on there, you'll find them. I think they're both. I know that uh, the Share Him one's on there. I don't know for a fact yet that she's got the uh, other one up. Betsa is out there cleaning up stuff, and she didn't tell me that. Uh, they're they're trying to they're trying to get 18 to 35s for the mission trip. So the one to Indonesia is actually going to be led by a 24 year old that we're mentoring right now, and he, so we're going to say, okay, it's a young adult trip. It's totally young adult trip. Rob nor I, either one's going to go. I think he was too tired after the last one. Um, <laughs> and I saw the video. <laughs> so, um, if you look at the back of your schedule that's in your that little half sheet, this little thing here, you'll see our contact information. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, and a lot of that information is also on there. And, and to, to know how to register and sign up, you'll find that all right there. One of those. Um, you may have seen this magazine in your folders as well. Why would a magazine be named 71.5? Thank you for asking. Um, if you go to the back cover, you'll see Psalm 71.5. For you are my hope, O God, Lord God, you are my confidence from my youth. This is all done by youth and young adults in our conference. As a matter of fact, uh, a young adult came to me. She is now the editor for Health Scope and City Scope magazines in Chattanooga. And she said, I've always had this dream since I was 17 years old to produce an Adventist magazine that didn't look Adventist <laughs> so that I could share it with my friends. And uh, so that's what she has done. And she has a writing board, and a, she's got an all-volunteer writing staff from all over the conference. We have one of those writers with us today. Ryan has been featured, what, three times now? Twice. Twice, Tw twice and you got another one, I think, on the docket. And matter of fact, look, in the back page, Ryan is right there. So every... Every photograph, every painting, she's trying to highlight those kids that don't get highlighted very often. That is the artistic kids, the kids that, that write, uh, the kids that um, get overlooked a lot of times. But uh, as she's doing so, uh, she's having them write the stuff. She's having them take the photos, do the illustrations. So this is all done by youth and young adults in our conference. And since uh, Insight Magazine went down, we're starting to get orders from other conferences. We just got an order for 300 copies from Florida last week. So this, we think, will in five years or so be going nationwide. Uh, I'm talking to the North American Division. I'm on the North American Division Young Adult Board. And um, I presented it to them last meeting, and they were all so excited about it. And they're going, wow, and this is all produced by kids. Yep, sure is. Uh, so youth, young adults. And so this is the big questions issue. This was the last issue. Next week, a new issue is coming out called the faith issue. So you can find in here how to subscribe. There's a card in there. You can fill it out. Ten bucks for four issues per year. We have four issues per year, quarterly. And uh, so if you've got youth, young adults, you think 
would really benefit from it. You can get bulk issue rates too. So there's that. Make sure I'm covering it all. Yeah, there went my notes. Um, in your packet, there's also this colored sheet. You know, we've had a clear-cut path to baptism. We haven't had much after that. Matter of fact, after baptism, the water gets a little muddy, so to speak. As to for, where do you take people next? And so we decided to at least have some common vernacular that with the Young Adult Leadership Committee, we sat down, our council, we sat down, we said, what would a discipleship path look like? Uh, if we're going to lay out a path... How would you go from, from the very beginning all the way to becoming a disciple-making disciple? Now, this isn't by any stretch of the imagination the only way to do it. This is only one way to do it. But for the purpose of our dialogue in this conference, when you keep hearing discipleship path, this is what we're referring to. So you're going to hear more and more about discipleship in the next couple, couple of years, because this is on our, our four, five, six year plan. Matter of fact, this summer, we have a brand new camp for teens. There's going to be a multi-week camp called Disciple Trek and, uh, at Cahutta. And it's going to be for those kids who, it's, it's not just anybody can register for it. They actually have to be recommended and so forth by a pastor. You'll see in the brochure, Disciple Trek. Uh, and we want you to know we're looking at this track here, as well as helping them understand what the, uh, what the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church are, and how they incorporate those into a lifestyle rather than just a knowledge. So Disciple Trek is coming. Discipleship Path uh, for ACF event, Next Level Discipleship, there it is. We're going to be talking about this very path right here. So at ACF, that's, that's the uh, retreat schedule. Matter of fact, if you want to know what Friday night, Sabbath, Saturday afternoon, there's all three right there. <laughs> One, two, and three. So I wanted you to just see this discipleship path and get familiar with that. You'll hear more about that as we go through the next couple of years um, as we look at what is, what is a disciple. Um, and then we talked about you getting your welcome packet, mirror packet on there. Now, this one... It's a great color. I don't know who picked it. But look for that color sheet. We want to help you start the, the discussion back at your church. Because what happens is, oftentimes in churches, they'll say, well, we don't have places to really involve kids. All the jobs are filled, yada, yada, yada. So Rob and I sat down to say, okay, what are 100 plus ways to involve young people in church? Now, we began this process... Rob is in the process of actually writing role descriptions for each of these. So when he gets all done with it, we'll have a role description for what that means. But these are just simply some ideas for you to say, here's some ways that we can involve kids. It's a discussion starter, front and back. There's a lot of, a lot of things there. Um, and so there's, there's ways and different things. There's the affirmation ministry, health and wellness recreation, finances, outreach, hospitality, uh, leadership, social, programming, physical plant, spiritual disciplines, and technical skills. So we've kind of divided them up into areas so that you can kind of get a, a broad area and then move them into uh, more specific jobs to say, hey, what if we created this for you? That way it makes it a lot easier to start. Does that make sense? Um, it makes it a lot easier, I think, for you to say, hey, what if we created a, a hug specialist? Now, more conservative churches, you might not want to do that one right away. But, you know, Acts did say you greet each other with a holy kiss, so they're not going all the way there. Um, but an umbrella crew. What if on, on rainy Sabbath you had an umbrella crew and they're meeting people at the car just to walk them in? Uh, so there's a lot of ideas that you can get you started on that. I wanted to point that one out to you as well. Um, so hopefully you can tell that we are fairly serious about really taking this mandate seriously and trying to move the whole thing forward. 
um, and that's important. One last sheet here. There's one that says evaluation. If you would take that one out and spend about five minutes just filling it out. Betsa has a box right back there. Where's the box, Betsa? On the table right in front of the snacks that you want to take with you as you go. Um, yes? Okay, good, because I didn't know that either. So five is good. So it's going from excellent down to... So we want left... No. Um, so if you would rate those sessions as helpful, we'd say five is most helpful, one is least helpful. You have to decipher that. So you put one as the best. All right. So five is best, she says. One is not. Um, so we'll just know you totally bombed down the day. And <laughs> so what was most helpful to you? What would you like to see our next seminar in August? What would assistance from here look like until August? If you'd like things that we can improve on and so forth. If you'll fill that out, that will help us get ready for August. And then, uh, did the calendar from the... I gave mine away. Yeah, it's August 17 and 19 is that liaison training at the, at the camp. You will be getting notices in your thing, but August 17 and 19, uh, I should send you a magnet that says save the date, right? No, I'm just kidding. I tried. I know. I guess uh, me and the wife here, we're actually part, taking part in two experiments through the conference office now. Okay, good. So if this is an experiment, and they just hired us as... Uh, For the what if? Bi yeah, little well, Bible instructors, lay people. They, they hired some lay people as Bible instructors to go out and teach people how to do Bible studies. So I'm just kind of thinking, how much is there a possible way that we can incorporate both of these? Sure. As long as you're on our side. No, I'm kidding. Well, I don't know. Do I go against you or Victor? Victor. Go against Victor. <laughs> no, there, there are ways to, to put those together if you just stop and look at it. There's, we're wide open. We're so flexible. It's unreal. Would it, would it be combining the two to start an ECF on my university campus where we can have one? Yes. And we can talk about that. I won't help with that. Okay. Send me an email. There has not been a formal announcement yet. As a matter of fact, it'll be coming in the next week. But they just asked me to take ACF uh, this last week. So I'll be covering ACF as well. But that's unofficial. So if you, you say you heard it here, you didn't. Wait till Ed writes, uh, <laughs> comes out, and he has it there, and it's in the communique. And, and boss would say, deny it. <laughs> so yeah that just got added to my package so um, so yes we can we can talk about that
while everyone finishes up, are there any questions or thoughts you came here hoping to answer them we haven't touched on today? Or maybe you need clarification for Yes. And that is still on the docket. The ACF piece got interjected in between that, but that's still going to be developed this, uh, this quarter. Matter of fact, we're going to begin with the north and then go to the south and then come to the central. Because you guys are ready. <laughs> well, we're going to jump the central and then come back. Um, probably we'll end up with two in the central because you've got the, the Chattanooga hub and the Atlanta hub. And then you go south of that for the south region. We have got a very large conference. We go from the Virginia-Tennessee border down to the Florida-Georgia border. So there's a lot of territory there. And the, the Tennessee part of it is just the Cumberland Plateau, but that's pretty good size. And when you try going from the top of it down to the bottom of it, uh, it's, it's a good long piece. You can do it in about 12, 13 hours. I was just up in southern New England uh, two weekends ago. And um, I did a training event for, for, for their youth leadership up there. And I was talking to the conference president. He says, yeah, it's, it's really rough. But he says, I, I can pretty much be home from any church in the conference in, in a couple hours. <laughs> that would be nice. So anyway. So yes, we're going to be developing regional young adult councils. And uh, if you know somebody that would be good on one of those, we're, we're starting with the north, then going to the south, and then central. But that's the next two years, that's what we're building, so that uh, we will be able to do regional events as well. I've already budgeted for it and stuff, just haven't gotten back to it. Any other questions? Yes? Oh, the, the baseball analogy? Yes. Yeah. Um, and just very briefly, what he's talking about is, as we studied it, Rob and I began to realize that we've had a pattern in youth ministry that hasn't been healthy. And that is that if you were to look at the baseball analogy, and I don't have that um, on the screen for you, but if you looked at a baseball analogy, everybody knows where first base, second base, third base, and so forth is. We, If you were to say that justification or calling people to Jesus is first base. We do really well with that. We continue to call people to Jesus, especially young people. The problem is, as we program for young people, we typically continue to just call them to Jesus and nothing else. And that's why this discipleship path has developed. Um, because we realize there's more than just justification. So some kid will be going... He'll come to Jesus and then start running to second, which we believe is sanctification, learning how to live in Jesus. And suddenly we go, wait, 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 you've got to come back to Jesus. And he's going, well, well, I'm going, oh, yeah, I better go back to Jesus. And it's like a first base coach saying, come back, come back, come back. And so we leave a lot of confusion, and we haven't discipled well because we're leaving them hanging out at first base all the time. Now, if first base is justification, second base is sanctification, Third base would be um, spiritual actualization. That is, discovering where they fit, how, what spiritual gifts they have, how Christ has put them together to work for the body of the church. They never get there. If they get to second, they're doing good. And so this discipleship path is designed to take them from justification, sanctification, self-actualization. Obviously, fourth, a home base would be glorification. That happens when Jesus comes. But what happens is, we haven't helped them in the process of growth. And one of the reasons we're losing kids is because we haven't done well as far as discipleship. And that's why we're moving into this whole discipleship phase and why the liaison thing is really important so that we can involve them, plug them in, and then disciple them. And so that's where we're headed. Yeah. was to actually help them on a Sabbath go out and do 
those things. And we've seen really good success in the staff school participation, even on the days we aren't doing it, because they're getting to use what they're hearing instead of just hearing about it every time. Excellent. Excellent. So that's what he's referring to. So, yeah. Um, anything else? Um, that's up to the individual churches. Some churches do, some churches don't. And actually right there we have two that have just recently been baptized. And then we have two that are in the process of studying to hopefully become baptized. Well, guys, it has been a very full day. I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, we're looking forward to trying this thing out. So please keep us informed. Um, let us know how things work uh, for you. Again, you can find all of my contact stuff on the web and probably the emails that I send out. Um, if you have questions on the way, give me a call. We're here to help you. I feel like I'm from the government. I'm from the conference. I'm here to help. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Any other thoughts, ideas, questions before we go? Yeah. Um, we have the, the contact cards we're supposed to fill out. So we put our name, title, information. Then on the bottom, you have to check two boxes, engage, and then engage. Oh, what is, it, what is engage? Engage is there. Okay, thank you. Engage is the, the newsletter we send out for young people. For, for high school, college age. Engage leadership is for those who work with young people. And it gives you leadership tips, different places to find research, uh, kind of keeps you up to date on that. So if you sign up for one of those, she'll add you to that list, and they come alternating weeks. So one week will be engaged, the next week will be engaged leadership. Uh, and so it's, and it's not, we're trying to keep it short with just pictures and links. So if you see something, it's kind of like a Twitter feed almost, you can see it, click on it, find more information, you don't want anything else, you just go past it. Um, so we're trying to make it as helpful and quick as possible. But that's what that's about. Yes? Is it uh, possible at all that one of the pastor's meetings, no matter where they have uh, they, you could present a condensed version of this? Well, that is not in my purview. Uh, that would have to be up to the ministerial director who sets all the agendas for those meetings. Uh, we are suggesting it, whether they take us up on it or not. We just had one down in Orlando, which is the whole Southern Union Ministerium, so our next one's not until August. But it would not hurt if you would send Ed Wright uh, an email or a letter saying, we think this should be on the pastor's agenda. You're videoing. Is yes. Is this going to be available for viewing? Uh, yes, it will be. Uh, probably so. We got a conference Vimeo site, okay. and once uh, Brian takes this tape, it's going to be just wide scale. It'll just be information. It's not going to be. I wanted it wide because I, I know what I look like on camera, so I wanted it way back there. And so, <laughs> so um, you'll be able to actually. He, he's going to separate into the segments, okay. and all it won't be any discussion stuff, just the presentations. Okay. Uh, but that he said will probably take him two to three weeks with all the stuff he's got going on right now. So hopefully we can get that done. He's up right now videotaping one of EW's uh, presentations at Chattanooga First Church. Then tomorrow he's going to be running a communications thing in this room. And then he's got to do all of that and then get that all put out. So uh, we usually take last place. So whenever he gets to it, I'll send you a, a, an email saying it's out. You can click on it and go. So, all right. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming. Let's pray as we close, and then you can get on the road. Father God, we thank you for these people who are willing to step out in faith to help young people and young adults, to assimilate new people into the church. We pray, Lord, that you will help them as they go back to give them wisdom to know how to approach their leaders, their influencers. We pray you'll go before them and open up the way and open up the doors. Give them your guidance, your wisdom, and give them safe travel now as they head home. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming.